Hello, so today's video is going to be on this Kajo Geiger counter, which is basically a very cheap Chinese one that if you're in China you can apparently domestically buy for about £11. Um, unfortunately I've never seen them for sale outside of China, but Hype very kindly sent this to me with some other gifts uh, so I could do some videos on it. So there you go, that's what it says on the back, and I will show you the instructions and the battery. So here is an instruction sheet, one in Chinese and one in English. The one in English isn't in brilliant English. And it also has some lies on it. Now, let me show you what they are. I actually overall do like this Geiger counter, but... It says, schematic diagram of the Geiger counter, Geiger Muller tube. And you'll notice on there, it says, mica window. It's implying there's an alpha mica tube in here. There's not. Um, alpha mica tubes are the really, really expensive Geiger tubes, the ones that read alpha radiation. If this had an alpha mica tube in, what you'd see is there'd be basically an opening somewhere on the Geiger counter like there, where you could open the window and read alpha particles. There's certainly not one of those. But let's look at what else is in here, shall we? So you've got the Geiger counter itself, um, and that takes one battery. It takes a 14500 battery, which is 3.6 volts. So it's basically, I suppose, the equivalent of having like two or two and a half double A's but in one battery. You can recharge this battery via this Geiger counter using that but that's quite slow. If you want to charge it it's much faster using a wall socket charger for all those sort of 18, 650 and all those sort of size batteries if you've got one. So there's a few different functions of this Geiger counter. Now I'm going to hold it quite close to the camera so you can actually see the screen and hopefully the camera will auto aggard it will because my webcam doesn't sort of adjust the brightness so you can read it. So it displays in either microsieverts per hour and your accumulative dose of microsieverts. But it can actually go quite a bit higher because notice there's a zero zero there. Um, and you can put alarm functions on it and it can also show calculants per minute. So in modes, let's do modes, you can have microsieverts per hour mode. You can have microsieverts per hour mode where it beeps. So basically, you know, every time it detects something it beeps. Pretty self-explanatory. You can have counts per minute and counts per minute where it beeps. So pretty explanatory. So let's go back to normal mode where it doesn't beep, and then you can have um, the one with an alarm, and you can set the alarm to what you want. So I think if you hold that down, um, I'm trying to remember which function of buttons you press now, because you can alter the alarm. There we go, see where I'm pushing that up? That's to um, raise the alarm. So if we had alarm 1 on, on M1F2, this is the sort of micro sievert dose for it to set the alarm off. Now this is pretty slow going, I don't know if there's a faster way of setting the alarm, but I don't think there is. Um, so if you can have the alarm on, bear in mind that it's going to take ages to set it to a decently high value if you want that. So you can have M1F1, which is on where I think it beeps when you get to a certain dose but no alarm. M1F2, which is the thing with the alarm. Uh, M1F3, when it goes to it, there we go, which is, I think, where you can just set it to a different alarm. And then there's M1F4, which, uh, function 4, which I think is no alarms or beeps. Um, but then there's also, obviously, you can have the beep through the mode. It's slightly confusing, but you do get to grips with it, and I've not done a very good job of explaining it there. But anyway, let's just test it works. So what we're going to do is put, in, put it on mode 4, function 4. Or sorry, mode 1, function 4, which I believe is the one where no beeps, no alarms, nothing. And get some cesium-137, which is a beta and gamma emitter. Um, the Geiger tube hype said, I haven't taken this apart because I don't want to break it, but apparently the Geiger tube is about there. So what we're going to do is just put the cesium-137 there. It's only a quarter of um, a micro curie. So very low sample size, and in a minute you should see it counting upwards. It's one of those ones where it seems to refresh sort of every 5-10 seconds or something. Um, that's what actually what the SOEX does, it's just with the SOEX it kind of has a little counter showing you how far along it is to it does it. It's also got a battery indicator there, look, so you can see how much battery is left in it. So at the moment it's saying we're on 1.7 microsieverts, obviously if you want to hear it bump, uh, beeping, there we go. And that's our accumulative dose at the bottom that's going up to show you basically that's the decimeter function. Now, I think, I'm just going to test this, if you turn this off and on, so we're on M2F4, I'm pretty sure the only annoying thing is it does wipe it like it's got no memory for it. So let's just go back to M2F4. 
Yeah, it does wipe it if you turn it off and on. So that's the only annoying thing. If you turned it off and on, you wouldn't know how much dose you've accumulated. So it's not like the SOEX in that regard, where you have to... Um... So, yeah. so anyway, that's doing... Um... Saying at the moment we're getting 4.73, 4.53. So I guess that's what it's going to round off as counts per minute. We'll vary a little bit on the decays with the cesium. Now what we're going to do is just go into the... CPM mode and let's see what the CPM is because what I can at least do with the CPM is I can check this against another Geiger counter now all white CPMs always do vary from Geiger to Geiger the reason being CPM is basically because it's counts per minute it's going to depend on the sensitivity of the tube and everything and obviously if it had an alpha micro window on and you had something you know against the alpha window you'd get more counts than if you had just a beta and gamma tube but that's saying 678 when this gets to a number where it seems to decide what it's going to be settling on, 679, right, so it's going to be about 680 counts per minute. Right, let's turn that on. Oh, sorry, turn it off. Now what I'm going to do, now we know the number's six, 670 to 680 counts per minute. Let's get a US CDV700 and put this on the probe the same way we did it with that. Um, and we'll see what sort of reading we get on there. All right, so here we go. I've got my replacement CDV700, this is a Victorine model, 6B, like the classic one, um, and this has a CPM display. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pan the camera down, um, so you can, oh, that's too far down. So you can see, hopefully, that. Now let's zoom in on the actual, um, if I can find a zoom switch, there we go. So what I want to do is so you can see the sort of CPM, right, there we go. I'm going to try it with the beta shield open and closed because obviously this will read beta and it, because it reads beta through the plastic it's slightly lowering the beta count. So let's turn this on. There we go. Let's turn that on. And you should hear it ticking in a moment. There we go. So, let's get our cesium sample. Uh, we can put that... If I push this to this side, I can put this here and then we'll put this on here. So let's put this on top of the cesium. We'll have it the same way round as before, or off the scale, go to times 10, off the scale, times 100, let's see if this stops somewhere where it's um, sort of readable. So at the moment that's 10 millironcom per hour. Um, and if we got to 100, that would be times 100, so that would be 10,000 counts per minute. I'm trying to remember what that other one stopped at. It wasn't that high, was it? Was it like 600 and something? Let's try it with the probe where the beta shield is not open on it. See, it's a lot lower, isn't it? So that's, I'm just going to fully close that beta shield, actually. Tell you what, I'll... Do the bit where it's a bit thinner, so it's hopefully a similar distance of metal between the, um, you know, sort of probe and everything than it was on the other one. So we're on the times 10 scale now. If it gets to 0 0.1 millironcom per hour, that's um, 1 millironcom per hour on times 10. But counts per minute. Uh, 100 counts per minute is there, so about 50 CPM would be about there, it's not exact. So that's about 500 counts a minute, I guess, at the moment. So yeah, that's not too far off, is it the 600 we got on the other one? Let's put that Kajo back on, actually. Put it on that function we had it on. CPM. Put him there. This isn't going to be exact, obviously. Actually, what I can do is put him there like that. Put this here. And again, this is a pretty shit way of doing it. Bear with me. We're just going to see what sort of reading we get like this and see if they sort of equate. Alright, the counts per minute is definitely already higher on the um, Kajo. What happens if I partially open the beta shield on this? Do this sort of thing. Well, we're already beating it then as soon as the beta shield opens. I think it's because the probe is just more sensitive in this, but when it's open.
at 257. One of the only annoying things to this is because the screen goes into power saving mode after a while, which is kind of good, you do have the issue where you have to keep turning the screen kind of back on to read it, because it goes very dark. So it'd be nice if you could set how long it, you know, stays on brightness mode for, but you can't. Uh, like with the SOX you can, but again, if this is like an £11 Geiger counter, if it costs something like 110 Hong Kong dollars, you know, you can't really fault that. And apologies for my cold. I'm really sort of congested and horrible at the moment. Let's just put that flat back on there. I'm just going to blow my nose while you can't see me and that's beeping. Right. 226. 315. 402. 402. I suppose what I could do in a second is try flipping it the other way around so it gets a lower reading because it's reading through the sort of thicker plastic backing of it. Which might sort of give us more of a gamma only reading. 461. Five three four, so I think it's going to finish probably about six hundred odd again. I should tell you what, I can just turn that like that, can't you? So you can see the screen a bit better. It's probably still at a bad angle to read the screen like that. Six nineteen, six 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 three nine, yeah. So it's six hundred six fifty. I guess it averages on there. If we flip that over, it'll be a slightly lower count. See what that finalizes as, and then we'll try it that way round, just on this one. But I think it's fairly accurate for what it is. I imagine the tube in here is basically uh, one of these tubes. Let me just unplug this so you can see it more easily. Hang on. Um, that's in sort of a lot of the Chinese Geiger counters, which I believe is a Chinese copy of a Russian tube that's actually very good for what it is, you know. it's you, If you're paying for tubes alone in the West, you'd be paying more than that, you know, for the tube than you do of the Geiger counters with the tube. Okay, so that's saying, what, five, 526 CPM now. So now if we get this, we do the same sort of thing. We'll open the beta shield and we'll put this like that on there. Let's see what it stops us. Now if it gets halfway to 500, like there, like it's doing, that's a pretty similar counts per minute. Because we're on times 10, so 100 would be 1000. So if we get to about there, then that would be about 500 counts a minute. So yeah, I don't think it's too far off when you do it this way around actually. But yeah, there you go, so that's it compared to a CDV. The only thing I've noticed so far is the battery drains pretty quickly. Now, the problem with a lot of digital Geiger counters, as Hype was saying on the streams, is because these aren't shielded like the big old military ones or civil defence ones are like these, it means that the batteries get, you know, pretty much wrecked by um, high, you know, bits of radiation. Or it, not even all that high bits of radiation, in all honesty. So if you're trying to measure, you know, something fairly radioactive, you might find your battery would die. But in all honesty, I've not had a chance yet to give the battery in there a total full charge. So it might be more honest when I've given it a full charge. But I still think this is probably going to suffer a bit on battery life compared to um, something, you know, like the old Geiger counters that use several D-cell batteries just because, you know, they were shielded and they had a much bigger power reserve. But there you go. That is what it is, and it does seem to be pretty good. And bear in mind, as said, this Kajo Geiger counter is if you were converting the currency into Western money, like 10 or 11 pounds, if you built a DIY Geiger counter set like this, these are like 30 pounds without all the Arduino, or whatever it's called, stuff, you know, you know, plug into it. So yeah, this is probably the cheapest Geiger counter in the world in that regard, and in that regard, it's not bad at all. It's just a bit rough around the edges in some way. Um, like saying, you know, if you turn it off and on, you lose your decimeter um, count, so you don't know how irradiated you've become. Um... You know, the screen can't be customised, it turns off half a set amount of seconds, which is a bit irritating. But, all in all, you know, if you wanted to see what sort of dose you're accumulating, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show you that absolutely fine. And when the battery's fully charged, 
you know, it may be better in that regard. And it might also be that, you know, to get around this, you could buy um, a very high milliamp, you know, rechargeable battery for it that you can kind of just force to, um, you know, when it's fully charged, will give you more of a thing. But yeah, for £11, yeah, you can't really go wrong with that if you're able to somehow get them in the West, you know, at that price. But if you're in China, yeah, it doesn't have an alpha micro window like they claim in the instructions, but for what it is, it's very good. Um, especially if you just wanted some way of measuring radiation.